effect, I'll tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of the place, The Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And a reading from Hebrews chapter 9. When Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God to purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
John chapter 8, we read together. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory, for there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I did not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to his people by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. In the name of Jesus, amen. God tested Abraham's faith. And by God's grace, Abraham passed the test. You know, I've been going to school for a long time. Hopefully I'll finish this year. But one thing I know is tests. Why do teachers give tests? To see if the student has learned the material to see if the student remembers anything. And the same goes for Abraham. Why does God test him? To see if Abraham remembers. Hey, Abraham, do you remember that you used to be an idol worshiper? And when you were 75 years old, I found you and I called you to be mine. And do you remember that covenant that we made? I put you to sleep and I signed the agreement all by myself to show you that our relationship would always depend on me and me alone. Oh, and remember that time when you were fearful in Egypt? Remember how you told Pharaoh that your wife was your sister and he took her? And do you remember how I saved her and you went home rich? Oh, and remember when you were fearful again and you lied about your wife again, giving her to another king, and I had to save her again. Remember when your nephew, Lot, was in trouble and captured in the war, and I used you and a small band of soldiers to conquer many armies? And then remember when Lot was in trouble again, and through hearing your prayers, I saved him from Sodom 
by the hand of my angels. <laughs> oh, and hey, Abraham, remember when I told you four times distinctly that I would give you a son in your old age? And remember how you took matters into your own hands? <laughs> and then when I reminded you of my promise, you laughed at me? Yeah, that's why your son's name is Isaac, which means laughter. For not only did you laugh in mockery, but then I gave you joy in your old age. Oh, and Abraham, remember when I promised you, back when we first met, that I would make you great? I promised you that I would bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. Do you now see how true that was? Oh, and I promised to give you this land. I told you the future. I told you about the exodus and all that will take place. And I promised many offspring. And do you remember how I promised that I would bless every family on this earth through that child that I gave you? Okay, now that we've reviewed, it's time to take the test. Take that child, your son, your only son, your beloved son, and offer him up as a burnt offering to me on the mountain I'll show you. Many people, when they hear that story, they imagine that Abraham and Sarah then had an anxious conversation about whether or not to obey. But that's not what the text says. From what we know, Abraham immediately obeys, without hesitation. For through a lifetime of failures and blunders and doubts, Abraham has finally learned to trust God. Now certainly he's got every reason not to obey, for it seems like the Lord has called him to kill an innocent person. And not only that, but this person is the promised child, the one through whom all people will be blessed. But through many years, Abraham has learned that God says what God says, and God means what God means. He has learned that God is good, and that God can always be trusted. So Abraham obeys. The book of Hebrews tells us that Abraham was willing to do it, knowing that God would have to raise his son from the dead. You see, God had promised, and therefore the story could not end with Isaac dead. Yes, even if he slit his son's throat, causing all the blood to pour out, even if fire consumed his son completely, Abraham believed that God would still fulfill his promise, that somehow, some way, that boy would come to life again. Indeed, that's what he says to the servants. He says, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship on the mountain, and then we will come to you again. We. The verb here is a first-person plural. We. Me and the boy. Somehow, both of us are coming down this mountain. I don't know how, but the Lord will provide. And as they go up the mountain, Isaac is carrying the wood for his own sacrifice. I imagine his shadow was the shape of a cross. He's carrying the wood just like Jesus did. And with innocent eyes, he looks at his father and says, Father, I see the fire and the wood, 
But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And looking at his son, Abraham says, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And when they came to the place that God had told him, Abraham built an altar on the mountain. And he laid the wood in order, and then he tied up Isaac, hands and feet. And notice here that Isaac says nothing. Like a lamb to the slaughter, like Jesus at his trial, Isaac opens not his mouth. Then Abraham reaches out and he takes the knife to slaughter his son. And just when he was about to do it, the Lord calls from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. He says, here am I. Do not lay your hand on that boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up, and behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. And Abraham took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. And do you know what that place was? It was the same location where later the temple would be built. And it was very near the same place where Jesus would be crucified. 2,200 years later, as it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. Not only Isaac's salvation, but yours on the holy mountain. For God has provided a lamb as a substitute, and his name is Jesus. Dear friends, you and I should have been laid upon the wood. You and I should be slaughtered because of our sins. But no, God has provided a lamb, a substitute has been found, one whose head is caught in a crown of thorns, who is tied up and hanging in a tree. For Jesus, like the ram, was offered on the wood instead of you. Friends, this is marvelous. In Abraham's story, we see the story of how God would redeem the world. Well, except for this one fact, when the greater story happened, when the Father offered up his only son, God spared not his son, but gave him up for us all. God stopped Abraham, but he actually went through with it. And if God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also give us all things? Friends, do you see it? This God is good. This God is merciful. This God can be trusted, for he loves you dearly. And in Christ Jesus, nothing can separate you from his love. So, God tested Abraham. And I want you to know that God will test you, too. God tested him. And in Abraham's old age, in his 100s, Abraham finally passed the test. 
And friends, just like it took Abraham some time to learn, it might take some time for you too. Along the way, you may stumble like Abraham did. You may have doubts like Abraham did. You may be fearful at times and make foolish choices like Abraham did. You're a work in progress. But if you're anything like Abraham, you'll have a really strong faith by the time you're in your early 100s. Until then, keep repenting. Keep confessing sins. Keep hearing the word. Keep running back for forgiveness. For this God is gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, and he forgives sins. For he spared not his son, but gave him up for us all. Maybe by God's grace, we will figure things out sooner than Abraham did. Maybe it won't take us to our early 100s. But either way, know this, God is faithful. And no matter what, you can always trust his word. You can trust his promises. For he never lies, and he loves you. In the name of Jesus, amen. At this time, we would normally take our offering, and so I want to remind our members uh, that your tithes and your offerings are still needed to sustain St. John and its ministry, both in church and school. So please, you may mail your offerings to the church office, or you can go online and also see the options that are available there. If you go to stjohnfraser.org, on our homepage of the website, there is a spot that you can learn more about online giving. Also refer to the email that you were sent from, uh, from the church office regarding other options. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that you have given to us your Son, Jesus. For so often we struggle with the tests that come across in our lives and we fail to trust your promises. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus and grant to us your Spirit that our lives and our hearts might be renewed that we may serve you in joyful obedience, trusting in your mercy to cover the sin that still is attached. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for our fellow Christians, that you might watch over our members, that they may be kept safe in this time of danger. We pray for our fellow Christians throughout the world, that by your mercy, they might be protected in times of tribulation and times of persecution, and they may hold fast to the name of your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the ill. We pray for Jim 
and all those we know and name in our hearts. We pray for those filled with fear. We pray for those who suffer through mental illness and are troubled day in and day out of their lives, that they might find moments of peace and rest in your hands. Lord, in your mercy, our prayer. For those who are mourning, that they may receive the comfort that Abraham had, the comfort of the resurrection of the dead. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the family and friends of Larry Mealbrandt and Ruby Single as they mourn the death of their loved ones. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would watch over them, care for them, remind them of your promises, drive them back to the word which alone sustains them, the word which is Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the protection of our region. We are beset by this virus, and it is all around us. We pray that you would offer your protection, that you would withhold your anger, and that by your goodness there might be repentant hearts calling upon you for your help and aid now and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin and neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen.